what I don't think people in the community understand, we, we're in all hazards, all fire departments are in all hazards response. So we get a lot of departments respond to EMS calls, car wrecks, uh, carbon monoxide detectors, and probably what any area sees now is we're seeing less and less fires. Unfortunately, the most important thing we need to train for, we're all called fire departments for a reason, is to be able to go into burning buildings, rescue people, put the fire out, try to save people's homes and lives. It's a culmination of our training from throughout the year. We just start with the basic firefighter and we run them through a program that starts with safety and, and graduates to their gear and equipment and, and then into some of the tactical things, ventilation, forcible entry, how we're getting into buildings, how we open up buildings. And there's two ways that we can deliver this and each department does it a little different, but, but overall the county has one broad training objective. We call it 40 hour red tag. So we can bring firefighters in, train them up to this level, and then the live burn portion is kind of the end where you put everything together. The building was built uh, a little over 20 years ago on property that was donated from the Buxton Volunteer Fire Department back to Dare County to facilitate a training facility for all of Dare County. So this building is actually, we're on county property, it's a county building. And together with the Dare County Association of Fire Officers, uh, the Fire Officers Association has kind of taken over the, uh, the upkeep and maintenance. We have to be very careful when we're doing training in an acquired structure. This is a concrete building behind me. It's not going to burn down. It's not going to fall down. So we can go in there and we can, we can have fires, we can have smoke, firefighters crawling around with a relative degree of safety and confidence that the building's not going to fall down on us. Um, one of the scenarios we're doing is we have a hole in the roof, we light a fire under it, and the crew goes up and cuts a simulated plywood roof with studs in it over top of the fire. We can't do that under live fire conditions in an acquired structure. We burn Class A materials, hay, and pallets, which are donated and light that on fire. We try to get a little bit of fire up on the ceiling towards the doorway, which is called rollover. We're trying to make it as realistic as possible. There's something called the National Fire Protection Association, or the NFPA, and is voluntary guidelines that are set up by fire departments, fire department representative, manufacturers, and various other agencies to govern all sorts of things fire related. And the 1403 is specifically a standard that applies to live fire training. And it tells us what we can do, what we can't do. And it is based on, unfortunately, a lot of line of duty deaths and injuries that have happened during live fire training exercises. And the goal is not to have any. It's, it's very hard to justify a death during training, during live fire training, particularly if you're following the standard. It should not happen. We plan this months in advance. We ask our entire membership to give up the weekend. We have half our crew down today and half our crew down tomorrow. It takes a lot of training from the members, from the other departments, and just the logistics around it. We're coordinating a lot of things. There's 51 people on scene today for our training. Another thing people don't realize is I may live in Duck, and we are the Duck Fire Department, but if Southern Shores gets a call or Corolla or even Kitty Hawk or down the beach, depending on the size of the, the call, we're all going. So it's great, we kind of help each other out, so it's good to be able to train in an environment where we can hang out, meet the new people, but also know that no one town puts out every fire on their own. Sometimes we all require each other's mutual aid, and that's why this experience is awesome. It allows us to stay competent, so when we go to your house and your house is on fire, or you or your family's trapped, it, it, it lets us maintain our competence so we can hopefully come and save your house and save your family.